Here we have set up the solo variant for Star Wars The Card Game. You set it up just as you would the two-player game, except for a few small changes. Let's take a look at those changes. Choose your allegiance, create your deck, and set the balance of the force token just as you would the base game. Separate all cards with the zero force icons from the AI command deck and shuffle the remaining cards together. Draw up the AI's player reserve value from the top of the altered AI command deck. This will form the fate deck. Add the cards with zero force icons back into the AI command deck and shuffle the cards. Take the top three objective cards from each objective deck and place them face down in their areas respectively. Draw cards equal to the AI's player's reserve value. This is the AI player's hand. The AI player's hand will be filled from the AI command deck up to its reserve value at the start of each AI turn. Randomize and reveal the three objective cards for the dark side player and place these into play one at a time, resolving any relevant effects. Follow the same process for the light side player, putting the objective cards in play in a random order. Now that we've looked at the setup changes, let's take a look at the rule changes. Now I won't be going over all the individual rules for each card, but I will give you an overview of the basic rule changes so you can get started right away. Let's take a look at the rule changes for each phase of the game. Balance. Follow the normal rules for the balance phase, except in the first round, do not increase the Death Star dial by one point. Refresh. The AI player gains resources equal to the number of resource icons on objectives, enhancements, affiliation card, and other resource providing cards in play. These are placed into the AI resource pile. Ignore resource matching requirements and cards that require you to spend resources on specific types of cards. Resources gained at the start of the turn can be carried over to subsequent turns. Remove all shields and focus tokens from the cards in the AI player's area just as you would in the base game. If the AI has fewer than three objectives in play, replace each missing objective card by taking the top card from the objective deck and put it into play. Resolve any put into play abilities on that card. Replenish the fate deck by drawing cards from the AI command deck up to the AI's current reserve value and shuffle the fate deck. Draw. Do not discard any cards from the AI hand at the start of the draw phase. Return the AI's hand to its reserve value by drawing from the command deck. If the AI player's hand has cards equal to or greater than its reserve value, then do not draw any cards. Shuffle the AI player's hand. Deployment. Draw cards from the AI player's hand one at a time. Turn them over and pay for them from the resources in the resource pile until either the resource pool is reduced to zero, you draw a card from the AI player's deck and there are insufficient resources in the pool to play for the card, or the AI player's hand has no further cards to play. When there are insufficient resources available to the AI player to play the drawn card, then the card is placed back on top of the player's hand, face down. At the end of the deployment phase, shuffle the AI player's hand. If fake cards are drawn from the AI player's hand, they are added to the fate deck. At the end of the development phase, shuffle that fate deck. Enhancements are added to an eligible unit. If able, play the enhancement on the character of the same name even if there is an additional cost. The same rules apply to ships and pilots where applicable. If it is not possible to match the enhancement and the character, then the enhancement will be played on to a character using the AI card selection rule, which you can find detailed in the rulebook. In the case that there is no eligible target and the card has at least one force icon, add it to the fate deck. If it has no force icons, place it in the discard. 
events are paid by spending AI resources and placed in the AI player's area and are activated or played as soon as they are triggered or capable of being played. A card is only capable of being played if it is an impact on play. Units are placed in the AI's main area. At the end of the deployment phase, you will split all AI units currently in play into two pools, the attacker's pool and the defender's pool, which we will go into more detail later on. Whenever possible, pilots must be played using the pilot value and placed on ships unless its ability will have no impact on the ship. If that is the case, it enters play as a normal unit. At the end of each AI player's deployment phase, you must evaluate the AI player's units such that units with the most blast damage are placed into the attacker's pool, regardless of whether they are edge enabled or not. To decide which units are in the pool, count up the number of units currently controlled by the AI, including those played in the current deployment phase, and divide by two, rounding up. The result is the number of AI attacking units. All remaining units, excluding those with the attacking alone keyword, are designated as defenders, placed in the defenders pool, and will activ activate when the player attacks. Units committed to the force will also be designated as either attackers or defenders, and are included in the total units when determining the split. Conflict. In the AI conflict phase, the player objective should be attacked in the order that they were drawn from the objective deck. If for whatever reason, the blast damage for a unit cannot be applied to an objective, then it must be applied to another legal objective. In the event that the blast damage destroys an objective, but there are still attackers that have not been focused to strike in the conflict phase, then the blast damage is applied to the next objective in the order drawn. The AI will declare all units placed into either attacker's pool or defender's pool as participating units in the engagement. If the AI or the player has units or objectives that have the text including the phrase attacking alone, then the AI will mount additional attacks on the second or third visible objective with these units. During the force phase, commit one AI player unit with the most force icons to the force. The AI is allowed to select the unit to commit to the force on each of his turns and can uncommit and recommit one unit, but only if he has currently three units committed. The AI will uncommit the unit with the least force icons and commit the unit with the most force icons. When deciding whether the balance of the force is with the AI or the player, the AI player's units committed to the force are able to participate in the force struggle regardless of the number of force tokens placed on these units. Edge battles proceed as per the normal rules with the AI player and the player taking turns to place cards into their respective edge stacks. The AI player will place one card from the fate deck into his edge stack for each participating unit on his side of the engagement up to the maximum of the AI player's reserve value. However, if at any time during an edge battle the AI player has two more cards in the edge stack than the player, the AI will pass and not place another card in the edge stack. If the player then chooses to pass, the edge battle will end as both players have passed consecutively. If you want a more random result, consult the edge battle chart on page 10 of the rules to determine if the AI adds another card on the edge battle. If a twist of fate card is played in the edge battle, then the cards in both players' edge stacks are discarded as per the normal rules. However, the AI player's fate deck is immediately replenished to one card fewer than his reserve value before the next edge battle ensues. Here's a quick overview of the card selection rules. If the AI is required to select a friendly unit or any other card when presented with a choice to affect his own cards in any way, the AI player will select the highest cost unit. Remember to only select eligible targets in this. When the AI player is required to select a friendly unit card for a negative effect, then it will select the lowest cost unit card. If the AI player is required to select an enemy unit, the pl AI player will select the highest cost unit. If the AI player is required to select one of its own objectives to receive an enhancement, it will select the least damage objective. 
If it is tied, then it will select the objective, providing the most resources with the player breaking ties. Most ties for selecting cards comes down to the amount of force icons on them. For more tiebreakers, consult the rulebook. Pages 13 through 17 include more details about how to run the AI for specific card effects, such as adding focus, discarding, returning cards to the hand, or captioning cards, and much more. Consult these pages when, when they occur. The game ends the same as it does in the base game, with either the Death Star completed or three objectives being destroyed by the light side. However, the game will not end if the AI player's deck is exhausted. Instead, shuffle the discard pile and create a new AI command deck.